Hey, what is up? Welcome to The Daily Drive. My name is Bro, and yesterday we started looking at the life of a guy named Nehemiah who takes on this enormous task of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. The people are finally coming home after decades of captivity and exile, but the wall that would protect their city from more invaders who wanted to keep them in bondage, well, they were just a stone-upon-stone stone mess of rubble. So Nehemiah feels moved to oversee the project, and he goes back home. Now, we're just kind of cherry-picking from his life some qualities that mark great leaders. And we talked yesterday about how great leaders have the courage to stare reality in the face. They don't sugarcoat things. There's no denial. There's no pretending, no image management, no rationalization, no excuses. They just say, you know what? This is our current reality. And they also carry a burden to change that reality. They ask for help. They cast vision. They rally and inspire other people. And we left off yesterday with Nehemiah doing exactly that. He rides around the city to get a clear picture of reality. And then he tells the other leaders, this is reality and enough of this mess. No more complacency. No more apathy. No more excuses. We can do this. And they say, let's go. You see, most of the time, great leaders are also able to see amazing potential. Not only do they say, This is the way things currently are, and this has to change. But they also say, and this, this is how it could look. They're visionary, and they're able to see things that others can't or others won't. They embrace reality, but they aren't stuck there. They contagiously are forward-thinking and become this energetic force for positive change. I mean, I have seen coaches take over teams that went like 0-16 the year before, In just a few years, they win a championship. Or business leaders who take over a company that hadn't been profitable in years, and they turn them completely around. I've seen new pastors come in and inject some life into a struggling church and cast some vision and talk about potential and point people back to God. And in a few months, they're reaching people again and making a difference in their community. And Nehemiah was like that. Just a humble, ordinary guy who was able to paint a picture of the way things ought to be began moving people from this is how it currently is to this is how it's going to look someday, and this is how we're going to do it. Now, Nehemiah certainly has to deal with some critics and a whole bunch of naysayers, but he says to them, not in a cocky, but in a confident way, I'm telling you, with God's help, we're making a comeback. And man, do they ever. When I read Nehemiah's story, I also notice that great leaders are not afraid to to make huge asks There's a humble boldness about them. And and no, humble boldness is not an oxymoron. The the two go together. They just have this vision. And they believe in their call so much that they're not afraid to ask others to partner with them. And I love how Nehemiah makes a big and bold ask of the king that he served as a cupbearer. And I love how he retells it in chapter 2. He writes, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. I love that line. He's just saying, I was usually pretty happy. I served with a great attitude and joy. And it's so much so the king knew something was up. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. And then Nehemiah writes, then I was terrified. See, courage is not the absence of fear, but moving ahead in spite of the fear. And Nehemiah replies to the king, well, long live the king. How can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. And the king asked, Well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven. You see, you can pray on the fly. God, just help me in this moment. Give me the right words to say. Help me say with the right tone, the right humility. So I replied, If it please the king, and if you're pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. And the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, How long will you be gone, and when will you return? After I told him how long I would be gone, the king agreed to my request. See, Nehemiah worked for an unbeliever. And he didn't rush in and say, Okay, here's the deal. Three years leave of absence or I quit. He knew something had to be done in the heart of King Artaxerxes. So he goes to God and prays for for God to soften the king's heart. And he just patiently waits for the right moment and continues to show up on the job and serve in a God-honoring way. And gang, that's great leadership. And I don't know about you, but there have been a couple of times in my life when God had to remind me 
Bro, maybe instead of complaining about how bad you have it on your job, maybe you ought to start thanking me that you even have one right now and start showing up with a better attitude. And I don't know, maybe you could do the same. And even start praying for your boss and pray that God will soften hearts and grant you favor as you just faithfully honor him at work. I was reminded of Colossians 3.23 that says, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Now, I know that some of y'all are listening to this on the way to work today. So why not stick these principles and these scriptures in your heart today as you pull into the parking lot? And then just sit there for a little while and take some time to talk to God and ask him to help you walk through the door with a smile on your face. And then walk in with a great attitude, a positive, joy-filled spirit, and do your job with excellence, no complaining, and just see what God might do. And then come on back tomorrow. We'll unpack a few more things we see in Nehemiah's life. And I hope you have a great day and that God uses you in some very cool and unexpected ways. See you back here tomorrow.